In this video, we'll talk about the ratio test, which is a way of analyzing a series to see if it converges or diverges. Now the ratio test gives us a new method for figuring out whether or not a series converges or diverges. And the big benefit here of this test is the fact that it doesn't really care if the terms of the series are positive or negative. This will allow us to do analysis of a series where the terms are not all positive, but also not alternating to figure out if they converge or diverge. The main way this works is by it really only cares about the absolute value of the series, Hence, it also gives us results about absolute convergence. Let's look at the test. We'll talk about what it does and how it works. So let's let a n be the series we're trying to analyze. We want to see if this series converges or diverges. And to do so, we need to assume that a certain limit exists. And since it's called the ratio test, we want the limit of the ratios of consecutive terms of the series. We're going to call this limit rho. If it doesn't exist, this series can't be applied, and so you're sort of out of luck at that point. But if it exists, we can then talk about it. We get this value rho as this limit, and I want to know what does this mean about my series. So if rho is less than 1, then this series converges. Absolutely. On the other hand, if rho is bigger than 1, this series will diverge. And as a last result, if rho equals 1, the test is inconclusive. This inconclusive test is something like if you had the second derivative test from calc 1 and you got a 0 for the second derivative, that didn't tell you if you had a local max or local min. It was inconclusive about that result. The same idea is here. If I get rho to be 1, that means I don't know if it converges or diverges. I have no answer yet. I must do more work to figure out what actually happens to this series. And note that since we're looking at an absolute value here for the limit, it's absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. That means this number cannot be less than 0. Less than 1, it converges. It's about going to be at least 0. If it's bigger than 1, it diverges. And if it's equal to 1, it's test inconclusive. The idea as to why this works is, is a direct comparison with a geometric series. We'll see that in a later video, but that's sort of the idea of where this comes from. If ratio is less than 1, a geometric series converges, that's why this less than 1 is the condition here as well. So here's one example of how you can use this. We want to look at the example of does a series from 1 to infinity of n squared over 3 to the n converge? So since we see this 3 to the n here, as well as a polynomial on top, We'll see later why, but that's going to lead us to try to use the ratio test for this series. How do we use the ratio test? We compute the limit in the ratio test and see what I get. So the limit I want is rho equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1, the nth plus first term in the series, divided by a n. And I can plug in what these terms are. So a n plus 1 is n plus 1 squared over 3 to the n plus 1, where I'm just plugging in n plus 1 wherever I see n in the series, divided by n over 3 to the n. I can rearrange these fractions a little bit by flipping the 1 over, putting it on top. That will give me the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 squared over n squared times 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. I can then cancel a bunch of the threes, right? This will cancel all the n threes on the bottom, leaving one on the bottom, giving me the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one squared over n squared times one third. And then what happens to this thing inside? Well, this thing inside, I will get a one third limit as n goes to infinity, n plus one squared over n squared, it's a rational function, so that's going to follow our highest power rule. On the top, I have an n squared, which is coefficient 1. On the bottom is also n squared, coefficient 1. Therefore, this whole limit here is 1, meaning my answer here is 1 third. What does it tell me about my series? Well, since the ratio test limit is less than 1, I therefore know this series converges. And that's the idea of how the ratio test works. You set up this appropriate limit of the ratio of consecutive terms with an n and n plus 1 in them. You then plug in your terms. You do some manipulation. You cancel some fractions, move stuff around. And then you compute the limit. If you can't compute the limit, this might not be the right test to use. But in cases like this, you can be able to compute this limit and see what happens. If the limit's less than 1, it converges, absolutely. Bigger than 1, it diverges. Equals 1 means you've probably chosen the wrong test for figuring out whether this series converges or diverges. You should try a different test. That's how the ratio test works, and there's one example of using it to determine if a series converges or diverges.